Coming up next on the SPNN Forum, we have James Popeye Greer and Jellybean Johnson to talk about the Minneapolis Sound Museum. Hi, I'm Martin Ludden, Executive Director of the St. Paul Neighborhood Network, and we are here in the Kwame McDonald Studio at SPNN with James Popeye Greer and Jellybean Johnson to talk about the Minneapolis Sound Museum. James, Jellybean, welcome to the forum. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Pleasure to be here. It's great to have you. This is my. This will be my last forum interview, and I think this is one of my more exciting ones. So yeah. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> um, can you tell us a little bit, and either one of you can start. Um, what is the Minneapolis Sound? Okay, uh, for me, Minneapolis Sound. Well, I, I always gave Prince the credit for being the Minneapolis Sound, but obviously he came. Minneapolis, the, the Minnesota music period came years ago, starting yeah. Bob Dylan and and all the other bands before us and stuff. But as far as us being from the north side and the black side, uh, uh, we grew up in rival bands. You know, Prince was in a band called Grand Central. I was in a band called Flight Time. And we were like 14, 15, 16, yeah. 17 years old. And that's where it began. That was the infant stages of it. Yeah. And then, uh, of course, in 1978, when Prince made it, you know, we, he set the example for us. Right. You know, and, uh, and he came on the world in 1978. And, that's where it initially started, you know. He, he, all those things that we grew up learning, you yeah. know, as a teenage band and all the, the music we, you know, listened to and encountered, you mm -hmm. know. You know, prime example, I'll, I'll tell you a little short story about me. You know, my mom moved me here from Chicago when I was 13. Okay. Uh, to keep me out of the gangs in yeah. Chicago and stuff. And I came here. And it was a culture shock for me because when I was a little shorty growing up in Chicago in my first 12, 13 years old, there was 24 hour black radio. Okay. So it's black radio all yeah. the time, you know? And then when I got here, the black station was only on like three or four hours. And what were those, yeah. like? It was nighttime, like an afternoon daytime? from like one to five. Okay. In the afternoon, <laughs> so. <laughs> so after I got over the initial culture shock, yeah. then uh, I, it, it forced me to listen to the white radio stations, the Three Dog Nights and yeah. Black Sabbaths yep. and Rare Earths and Carl, you know, whoever during that time and stuff. So it, it started to shape me musically too, mm -hmm. you know, that I got into that and stuff. And then, but I still could go to the store and, right. and buy all the black hits. And yeah. black, you know, I was aware of them from that, even from that one to five, <laughs> you know, on the radio, I still knew what was yeah. a hit with the black radio and yeah. all that stuff. So it helped define me as a musician, started to develop me as a musician. And you know, and then I started to meet, you know, future comrades, you know, I like, I, I, I met Prince when I was 12 years old. Yeah. You know, I played basketball with him on this driveway at <laughs> 12, 13 years old. Yeah. And uh, all the other guys, the Jimmy Jams, Terry Lewis's, the Monty Moyers, yeah. uh, David Islands, Cynthia Johnson, you know, she was missing, you know, remember the song Funky Town? Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah, lip sync, was, right? Lip sync. Yeah. She, she was in our band as a 15, 16 year old. She was our lead singer. So, <laughs> So, so what did that scene look like when you're, you know, 14, 15, playing in bands? Where were you playing? Well, we were playing just private things and things because remember we couldn't play yeah. the clubs. We couldn't right. play the nightclubs. It was it was still segregated. You know, we were still black bands and couldn't mm -hmm. play. So we played a lot of black sororities and stuff and uh, mm. the, the the locals, BFW or, yeah. or Legion or whatever. Uh, I met Pop around 1975, 76. That was to, my next question. Where'd yeah. you come in? <laughs> I met him. He used to he used to he bought, actually bought a spotlight, yeah. and he used to, he, he would, you know, we were, we were quite organized when Flight Time was a band. We had a bus. Yeah. We, we, we didn't take any money from the gigs we did have. We took it all into buying instruments for each other, bought a new yeah. drum set, we bought Terry a bass amp, we, we bought a bus to haul a lot of stuff right. in, took the seats out so we could have enough room in the back to put the organ in the B3, yeah. and then we had enough seats for all the, the and you're talking about lemon, you know, 10, 11 piece band. Yeah. And then we had Pop, you know, Pop had the spotlight and all that kind of stuff. So we, we were quite organized to be, yeah. you know, 15, 16, 17 year old teenagers. Were you part of that? Like, were you following? Were you managing? What were you doing when you, <laughs> I'm, no, I, I'm picturing I you was, buying a spotlight was, as a way to get in. <laughs> I was the uh, Pie Piper of soul. There okay. he was. He was, um, was pre-Jerome, man. Pre, what, yes. yeah, what Jerome <laughs> yes. ended up being for Morris, he was us for well, flight time as a band. I, uh, yeah. He get the party going. <laughs> get the party going and yeah. keep the party going. Yeah. And you know, back then, you know, bells and whistles are part of the music, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
like Cool in the Gang and all oh, yeah, music yeah. and Wilson yeah. Bell. We so love I had every Wilson Bell yeah, you can think of. Yeah. <laughs> and Funky uh, stuff, Jungle I'm, Boogie, all that yeah. kind of stuff. I'm on the spotlight, you yeah. know, yeah. whistles and bells, and then I start to party off. Pied Piper comes through the crowd, yeah. get yeah. people up dancing, and we go up. Well, one time we were playing, um, as you know, being mentioned earlier, we was a battle. Yeah, yeah so we were playing, bands, and yeah. Prince always wanted to close. But yeah. well, why did he do that? Yeah, you know, we got him. Flight time to band, we was vicious, right? Yeah, we were vicious. Well, we, we took no prisoners, right, yeah. man? So um, we played uh, Butler Square downtown yeah, Butler Minneapolis. Square. Yeah, Butler Square. And they had the escalators. Yeah. And yeah. so I had people partying behind us, and we was, we was you know, we Bananas. did all those cover tunes. <laughs> I was up the escalator, down the escalator, people around it, and then Prince came on. They were like, Tired. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Sitting there. He would always get mad at me and cuss me out. You yeah, know? He, he, didn't, he got everybody he tired. He didn't like it. He didn't like, like it. We used to, we don't used to follow like us then. <laughs> That's when it was so ironic when he created the time and stuff and we were being concerted and the same thing was happening yeah. to him around the country. He's like, I can't believe this is happening again. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We used to get at him. Yeah. So you were, you were the hype guy. Hype guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah he was. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah. And so were you playing covers, originals? What was the... We had some originals, but it was mostly cover, okay. covers. Covers. We were, you know, we and we were unique because we had like a five-piece horn section. Yeah. So we could play all the Ohio players and the Cool and the Gangs and yeah. whatever horn band was out there. Yeah. We were playing all that. And Prince loved that, but his band was a combo, a little mm -hmm. combo. So he that I really think that helped develop his sound, too, because he learned how to play horns. He, he, the, the unique sound, the Minneapolis, part of the Minneapolis sound is the synthesizers, the Oberheim okay. synthesizers. And you know Prince's early work, you hear yeah. it, they're prominent. Yeah. That's from watching us as, you know, teenagers doing it live. Horn yeah. doing it live. Yeah. Right. That's where he got that from. That was my next, so kind of my, my follow on there is, mm -hmm. so we, we know the bands, mm -hmm. but like how would you define, what is the sound? Like what makes that sound, the Minneapolis sound? Is it, well, so we, we just, we're just, we're tight, we're funky. Yeah. We're different. We don't sound like any. I, I've gotten in trouble with a lot of my my uh, uh, peers, the you know famous peers and stuff, because I said that we're not a normal R&B band. We never mm -hmm. were. Prince yeah. is not normal. Yeah. No. And I said that, and they get mad. You know. <laughs> yeah, you know R&B. We're not. You know, yeah. we we were always different than your average R&B band. We still are to this day. Yeah. You but know, it was you know. R&B funk. Yeah. It was a but it was touch pop. of jazz. Yeah, it was pop it was in there, pop. too. Yeah, yeah. It was rock. Yeah, yeah. It had Mixed all the up, elements. Right. Yeah, yeah. Mixed up. Yeah. You know? Well, and it's, you know, I don't think people would think necessarily that Minneapolis would be a hotbed of funk. Oh, no, no. <laughs> to me, we were just talking about yeah. that off the air, you yeah. know? First of all, it's too cold. Right. <laughs> and back then, <laughs> Pop knows, back then, man, we used to have vicious snowstorms here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We used to have snow up around our heads, man. It didn't yep. stop us, though. It didn't stop us. It didn't <laughs> stop us. And, you know, because we'd be in our house. If we wasn't, we'd be practicing somewhere, you know, inside shedding, trying to get better at our instrument. Right. But it'd be a blizzard outside. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, you got to stay warm somehow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that was a good way of passing your time, you know. I, it was funny, you know, in my high school years, uh, I, would, I was on, the, you know, I played for the basketball for the team. I was starting center and stuff. And then, and then I would do that, go to practice stuff, then come home and go to another practice with the, the band mm -hmm. and do that till like 9, 10 o'clock and then yeah. go home and try to sleep and start all over and do it all the next day. Yeah. Hey, you know, you got basketball practice and then you got band practice. Yeah. Uh, so it, the, the good thing about it, it kept me out of the streets doing crazy stuff. Yeah. And that was the good thing. My I mom, mean, you could do some crazy stuff on stage too. But yeah, but, <laughs> different but yeah, it's different than in the street, you know. <laughs> yeah. With, yeah. yeah, you know, yeah. trying to steal cars and all that right. crap. You know. So. Well, and like drumming's a pretty physical. Oh pursuit. yeah, you so have to stay on your game. Basketball probably sets you well for yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Basketball helped with all that because you know uh, drums are physical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so <laughs> I'm picturing like that that mix where you all are, you know. Basketball, yeah, yeah. Practicing, we had at a night, few guys that going you know, out to gigs. Yeah, like, yeah. How often were you playing? Like, was this a weekly, weekly gigs? Uh, like, it wasn't. Was, it wasn't quite that. It, it was when it was convenient. Like I said, we were limited in where we could play in the first yeah, place. So. Right. So when we wasn't playing, that's the thing. When we when we wasn't playing a gig, we were rehearsing. Yeah. So it didn't matter, you know. If we got a gig, that was that was to generate money to buy some more equipment, buy a PA. Pop no, we used to buy a PA and all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. We, whatever band we, we, like I said, we didn't take a salary, we didn't take any money. Yeah. You know, we put all our money Just into turn it the, turn it back yeah. into the band, which I have to give us credit during that time, because you know, most teenagers, when today, you would, no, <laughs> no, that's not gonna happen. Yeah. 
oh, no, any money we make, no, we split it up. Yeah. Yeah. Us, we didn't do that. We, we had that business sense at an early age, at a teenage yeah. age. Well, it takes that. a lot of discipline to do it that. It takes a ton. Yeah. It takes a ton. Yeah. yeah. Um, so moving from Flight Time, the band, okay. know, what did that progression look like as you, got, as you all grew up? Because Flight Time became a label. Yeah, it became a, a, a production, production company. company. Yeah. Um, well, that started, the Prince kind of helped that long too, because he fired Terry Jimmy out of the time after, he, you know, after they missed a gig in uh, San Antonio. And, uh, and uh, it just started that, you know, so they turned that into writing songs. Yeah. And uh, the, first, the first hit, I think, was, was the SOS band? I think it was the first hit. Yeah, it was definitely SOS. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, and that, that, you know, they turned into that, and that turned Flight Time into a, you know, a, a production company. And then just from there, so then when Prince fired me a few years <laughs> later, I joined them and started doing production work for them. Pop was their operation manager in okay. the very beginning. He was doing yeah. stuff for them. And that was, you, yeah. you keep beating me to my next question, which is yeah. great. <laughs> yeah. So how did your role, you know, going from the Pied Piper, like well, how did your role get more formal then? Well, you know, Terry just said, you know, he needed me to, you know, look at the overall operation of the studio. Yeah. So, because he was still going out recording like he'd go to Atlanta and mm -hmm. record SOS or he'd go out to LA. Yeah. And so I kept the studio running while he was gone. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And so. how did you, I mean, that's depending on, I guess, on how the studio runs, like that's some pretty technical stuff. Did you just learn this on the fly or did oh, you Oh, I learned some? from one of the greatest yeah. recording engineers ever, Steve yeah. Hodge. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was like, I'm like a sponge, you know, yeah. I'm sitting there learning, I'm learning how to ask questions. I was never afraid to ask questions. So. Yeah. Of course, one of my gigs was I was in education. Okay. So I started in education in 1973, yeah. and I just retired. Wow. Yeah. So 49 years in education. So, you know, yeah. I didn't have no I had no problems asking questions. So, <laughs> I was learning, and I was a sponge on that. And then I'd work with Jelly Bean, yeah. on. Um, he recorded. He recorded, recorded a, lot of, a lot of my guitar solos and stuff. And being yeah. me and him into the house this morning. And all. Yeah, Black Cat. <laughs> yeah, Janet Jackson, Black Cat. Yep. Yeah. 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 I'd have him. Alexander O'Neill. Yeah. And Innocent, all that stuff. Fishnet. Yeah. 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 New Edition. New Edition, crucial. Yeah. Yeah. Rhonda Clark. Rhonda Clark. Yeah. Huh. They, Come on, man. Oh, okay. <laughs> Tell how old Karen we are. White. <laughs> Karen White. Yeah. <laughs> no, I yeah. was like, I was, yeah. um, I was, I was taped an interview a little bit ago with a, a married couple that was clearly had been together for a long time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're doing the thing, and like, yeah. I, I imagine if somebody sat down with my best friend, yeah, we yeah. would have a similar kind of conversation. But listening to you guys just bounce. Yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah. I, yeah. Go back, email. You're talking about the '70s. We've been doing this a while. Yeah. That's crazy, man. Yeah. Yeah. We're not young. You know, we worked the studio. Yeah. And then we take a break. And when we take a break, that's when we, we run out, out to the club. Run out the clubs, and that's when we saw Mick Condition. Yeah. Mick okay. Condition. Yeah, and yeah. then we, you know, yeah. we go out to the club. And the one song that uh, Alexander has called Midnight Run, where every midnight he'd make a run. He'd go to the, <laughs> get the newspaper, the Star <laughs> Tribune, and it'd come yeah. out at midnight. Yeah. He'd make that run every night. So they said, oh, Midnight Run. That yeah. Was, uh, Yep. Song by Alexander O'Neill, they decide to write because of his midnight run. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah. And so we were at, uh, at the Riverview Separate Club and we heard this yeah. dramatic drum opening, right? Yeah, and yeah. We, it caught out and we turned around, it was yeah. mid condition. Yeah. Mid condition. Nice. And at that time, Michael Bland was the, the drummer. drummer. Yeah, Michael Bland. The Michael Bland, Prince. I'm not gonna say stole him. No, he right. signed him signed, before yeah, our yeah. contract <laughs> came for Mick Condition, yeah. so he was he played with Prince. But yeah, but yeah, he was original. Well, Mike, drummer. Mike was the original drummer, wasn't he? He was original yeah, drummer for Mick Condition. And you know, and the, and the crazy thing about Mick is, you know, Stoke, Stoke is a world class musician, but he's a world class drummer as mm. well. Yeah, that's his. He is scary on the drums. You know? so Actually, he started out as a drummer. Yeah, but yeah. then they needed a singer. They needed a and singer. Said, Stokely, well, they singer. singer. When so you go up play, it's like, well, and that's it. Like that's you know, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> singing yeah. and drumming at the same time. Uh, yeah. yeah, there's not a lot. Of, world not class a lot of musicians there, yeah. man. Yeah, they're out of St. Paul. They all went to St. Paul Central, Central. Yeah. you know. Yeah, and they had a great studio over there and a music teacher. They had a music there. teacher that was excellent. Yeah, just excellent too. There. They learned a lot, kind of similar to us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So once again, that goes back to my thing about the Minnesota having the, we have one of the best music, you know. Yeah. 
music scenes around. We always have. It's been, we've been blessed. Yeah. yeah. If you are just joining us, we're here in the Kwame McDonald studio with James Popeye Greer and Jelly Bean Johnson talking about the Minneapolis Sound and the Minneapolis Sound uh, Museum. So um, that, you know, you said you'd go out to the club, take a break, go out to the club. What venues were, like, where were you finding music? Where were oh you going? Because I feel like <sighs> wow. you know, I stepped out of the theater the other night and I just, there used to be, you could step out of the theater and see... The Union Bar. You could see. Oh, well, and I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm a little younger than you, but yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. Five Corners, the 400 Bar. Yeah, 400 you know, Bar. Those, all that's we. I used to go to all that yeah. stuff. Yeah, and so many of them are closed now. Yeah. So, like, yeah. what were the venues? Where were you going? Nakarima. Okay. Nakarima. Over South Minneapolis, mm -hmm. a private club. Uh, we had the uh, Cozy Bar. My step, uh, my stepfather used to be a bartender at the Cozy okay. Bar years bar. ago, Jimmy Fuller, and then that turned into Peacock the Alley. Peacock Alley. Yeah. Uh, uh, establish Blue Note. Blue Note, the establishment. Moby Dicks. Okay. Oh, yeah. God, man, it was so many. Let's not forget the Thunderbird. Oh, that was one of our favorite. That was our favorite Thunderbird. hotel, right? On the Strip, yeah. Yeah. Like out in Bloomington? Yeah, yeah. 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 It was strip. one of our spots that the sororities and the fraternities always yeah, yeah. booked yeah. that they spot. Booked that yeah. spot. Yeah. We'd wear it out. out We'd wear it out, yeah, nice. as a teenage yeah. band. Yeah. Uh, Eddie Webster's, mm -hmm. that used to be on the Strip. Um, God, it's so many. I put the post like that the other day on my Facebook, and it's about hundreds of people yeah. just probably got clubs I had forgot about. The, right. The Cozy Bar and Lounge turned into the Riverview Sepper Club. Yeah, okay. yeah. And where was that? That was off the river. It was off the river. Uh, Broadway. On Broadway. And and off the river there. Yeah, okay. down. Down yeah, by the Pizza yeah. Broadway Bar down in it. Mm -hmm. You know, they just they just recently towed down the, the Broadway Bar there, and now this, you know, this, well, they turned down everything yeah. from that. <laughs> <laughs> they say affordable housing. Yeah. 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 You won't yeah. get into that, but yeah. yeah. Um, so as you're, you know, I mean, you're still playing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> where, um, where are you playing now? All over the ground the country. Yeah. Uh, here locally, uh, there's uh, the bunkers you can oh, see yeah. with the young kids. And, you know, I got so many young, they call me, you know, uh, they're like my young nephews. <laughs> <laughs> so, call him Uncle Bean. They call yeah. me Uncle Bean, and nice. they're, they're, they're world-class musicians. Like yeah. I said, they're going to be carrying on this music. Yeah. Way after I'm gone, they're going to still be here just killing. Yeah. Uh, so there's Bunkers, there's Shaw's, there's Minnesota Music Cafe that yeah. I played in for 25 years over there. Karen, I love her to death. That's on the east side, Karen right? Pop. That's uh, St. Paul, 7th and Payne, yeah. on yep. the edge of uh, downtown St. Paul. Um, uh, you still have your, uh, what am I leaving out? Uh, the, you still have the, the cabooses over there. Mm -hmm. You still have a whiskey junction. Whiskey junction. Yep. You still have a, the fine line. Is still yep. downtown. Uh, there's. I'm I'm leaving somebody out. First Ave. Yeah. First Ave. I mean, of course, Ave, yeah, after, of course <laughs> yeah. First Ave. You know. Yeah. So we we still have. We, there's a lot of places you yeah. can go around here. Just to. I mean, you're you're talking about coming up in a time where you could wander into a club and see yeah. in condition. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Well, and like it, you said, you walked yeah. out of the. Yeah. You, you even when, when you were younger, you walked yeah. out. You know, and then you you say you'd have the Seven Corners here. Yeah. You have 400 Bar there. I used to go into. I used to jam in the 400 Bar. Yeah. And, uh, and like I said, the Union right. Bar. You said that was before you, but yeah, I've seen many blues great in there. Yeah. You know. But there are still places where you can go. There are still places you still can go. See and still see bands to this day. Yeah. You can still go. There's a lot of places you can go. You just have to take your time and find them. They're yeah. there. You, <laughs> yeah. know, you just have to be willing to go there. You know. Right. Uh, the Northeast, there's a ton of bars over there, music bars and dive bars over Northeast. Yeah. So like I said, Shaw's, there's uh, May Slacks, mm -hmm. uh, 331, yep. Club, all that. Yeah. So they're everywhere. So as you come around to... Um, the Minneapolis Sound Museum. Okay. What's the um, What's the vision there? What's What is the museum gonna? I mean, it's. Well, I, tell us where you're at with it. Well, we're now we're in the, the infant stages of it. We're asking for capital and stuff mm -hmm. and trying to build it up. We want to have a spot where we can tell the rest of the story. You know, yeah. Paisley's there. Princess yep. Paisley. Paisley's a big museum now and all this mm -hmm. stuff. But there's a lot of people to help Prince develop than right. what he came, and that all started on the North Side. Yeah. And so we want to have our you know, our museum to show the other people that came up yeah. along with him that helped develop him and him to be in the musical force that he turned into. Yeah. And we don't have that. You know, Paisley's way out there in Chanhassen. Yep. You know, he built that whole thing. You see Chanhassen now, I, when he built Paisley, man, <laughs> Chanhassen came to him. Out there. Yeah. <laughs> now you go out there, you don't recognize it. Right. 
And that's because of him. Yeah. You know, he now they just named the highway for which they should, mm -hmm. because he developed that whole yeah. thing out there. So we we kind of want to do the same thing on the north side and bring up all the other people that you know helped us and him develop into that sound. Yeah. Stuff. So we we want to try ideally to find a place over north to put the museum, mm -hmm. and uh, and have something positive over there. Yeah. You know, have something positive. So. Yeah. That's what we're doing. So what kind of, you know, who, I guess kind of the, the who and the what, mm -hmm. um, what are we going to, when it's up, you know, what are we going to see? Uh, you're going to see various uh, things out of my career, out of the various careers. Like I said, people that wasn't, you know, fish, you know people that were associated with Prince, mm -hmm. people that wasn't, you know, and just, just that whole different side. Andrea Swanson has a book out where she talks about all the, the stuff and what the struggle we had as black musicians going mm -hmm. through. So we, we, we want to show that all that whole thing of the other musicians beside, you know, Prince. Prince made in 1978, but there's a host of us, like I said, like I was talking about the teenage years with Flight Time and all yeah. that. It's a whole other host of people like, you know, there's that Andre Simone and the different people that came from that era, you know, from that era, you know, that we can talk about the Alexander yeah. O'Neills, you know, all the, the people like that, you know. Whereas you won't see that much at Paisley. You right. know, you, Paisley's devoted to Prince and mm -hmm. the time and all the people that were associated with him, but those, a lot of those bands didn't come from the Northside. Right. They didn't. So. Yeah. And so a, a huge part of Flight Time Sound, there's a couple of names that we're going to throw out there that's going to be in the museum, like Lisa Keith. Mm -hmm. Lisa Keith is a very big part of the of Flight their, Time their, sound, their especially sound. the vocals. The vocal parts, parts yeah. yeah. She was most of that. That they would say the other girl mm -hmm. yeah, that was singing in the background exactly. and, and uh, filling in all the spots. Oh, she was just phenomenal. All, the, all that the heavenly background heavenly vocals, background. that was her. That was Lisa Keith. Lisa yeah. Keith. So yeah. And her husband is Bernard. Is Bernard. Yeah. 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 He was uh, my first production partner at Flight Time. When I first started producing, we did a, a song called Why Should I Cry for Nona Hendrix. And that was me and him. You know, and he's the one that got me into the computer technology yeah. for that and all that stuff. And that was at Rockside. Yeah, 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 yeah. Then the, then the band that you worked with, the, the rock band, Harlem. The Harlem Yacht Club, yeah. <laughs> That's a great we, name. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we have a song on, uh, called Brother Will on the Mo Money music soundtrack and stuff. The album never came out. That, you know, that kind of never saw light. Yeah. I wish it had. A, you know, yeah. We were kind of like, remember, you know the rock band Living Color? We were kind of yeah. along those same lines yeah. and stuff. So. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, we mentioned earlier, Cynthia Johnson, of course. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. lip sync. Yep. So that's so. what the our museum is going to be more like that. The people like that that you know yeah. you didn't that wasn't prominent as quite as prominent as Prince, but was part of his his upbringing and yep. part of he came up d knowing who we were and all that, and looking up to us too. You yeah. Know. Well, to me, it's the big little stars behind the big stars that yeah that are that shine like Prince and Jam yeah. and Lewis. They were yeah, those yeah. stars. Always saying the little stars make the Exactly. Stars shine bright. <laughs> Jam Lewis and Prince had a lot of help. Yeah. yeah. Just say that's that's basically what we're saying. Yeah. 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 So you've got kind of a there's a a cadre of folks here who maybe haven't seen as much limelight. Mm -hmm. Are most of them still with us? Still around? Uh, some of them. Okay. Some of them are gone. Yeah. But uh, there's yeah. there's still a few. There's so still around. Yeah. Kind of a chance to give them some flowers. Well. Yeah, get, yeah. So they can smell the flowers before yeah. we, you know leave Earth. We all in the fourth quarter around here. So yeah. <laughs> uh, on June seventh, we're going to showcase some of them. Yeah, yeah. At, we're at the Capri yeah. Theater, yeah. another classic theater. Prince played his first show at the Capri Theater. I they just did going. a big renovation. Yeah, it yeah. 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 looks so totally millions different. Millions of dollars in millions of dollars in renovating that stuff. I used to go there as a shorty. You know, and watch all the black exportation movies. Yeah. I used to go yeah, back in the 70s and that before, you know, and he played his first show in there. Uh -huh. and it had been 1978, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so. so tell me, you mentioned the June 7th event. Mm -hmm. What's what's going on in that, in that event? Uh, that's, it's going to be Tales of the North Side. And okay. we're going to have a, a, a group of panelists uh, and that, you know, come that helped develop that, like Spike Lee from, uh, Spike uh, Moss from, <laughs> see, I'm going to cut that. From the way. Spike Moss from the way. Uh, Q Bear from KMOJ, yep. uh, Spencer, Bernard, and Lisa Keith are going to be part of our panelists. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Pierre Lewis, who's a 13 year old wonder kid that used to be at the way. Yeah. Be, he's going to be in my band that I'm going to have there. Um, somebody else I'm leaving out. Bobby Van Dale. Bobby Van Dale, who I drums. played in the, uh, another classic band here called the TC Jammers that was a yeah. musical institution here. I was part of for 10 years. It goes, it's like 30, 40 years, but yeah. I spent 10 years in it. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Ricky Kitchen. Uh, Ricky uh, Kitchen from Mid Condition, condition. Okay. you know. 
He's going to be. And the great, phenomenal uh, Sue Ann Caldwell. Sue Ann Caldwell is going to be our lead singer that day. Okay. Along with Kathleen, uh, Kathleen Johnson, Johnson, whose brother is Kirk Johnson, who was a princess a long time. So know. we're going to have some panels, some stories. Some panels and, and some stories music. and some music at the end. Yeah. yeah so we, we're looking forward to it. And yeah. get your tickets today. <laughs> <laughs> Christopher Choice on Christopher keyboards, Troy, too, he's a, playing with. He's, a, he's in the time with me. He's yeah. the current time keyboard player. He's coming to play. And, uh, um, who else am I leading? I think that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, that's the band. You got an all-star band. Oh, all -star band. Jelly Bean. And me. Well, well, I'm here for comic relief. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, great. So you got all-star band. You got stories. Um, yeah. You got a chance to see the new Capri Theater, and I assume also raise some funds for. Raise some funds. We're gonna have an art collection. Uh, Payton, uh, Payton. Silent auction. Silent auction. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Peyton is who's a made it, amazing artist around here. He's done a bunch of murals around here and stuff. He's going to be showcasing some of his stuff. Uh, cool. He just had a show out at the White Bear Lake Arts Center. Yeah. He is a phenomenal artist. Yeah. I mean, a lot of these murals you see on these buildings around there, he did. Yeah. You know, Very so. cool. So look forward to that, you know. Uh, and another big thing over there is that what's the... The coffee shop over north there the, is the Get Down Coffee. Get Down Coffee is up. Is that it? I think that's it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Houston. Uh, his name is Houston something. But, uh, Houston White. Yeah. yeah. So you know, it's, we're looking forward to it. Yeah. You know, it's gonna be a lot of. People. Sounds like a good event. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, and if people wanted to find more info on this, uh, they could go to the website. Which website. Is... MinneapolisSoundMuseum.org. Cool. Yeah. yeah. And I think there's uh, there should be a ticket link on there. There's a ticket right, link on there and all that. that June seventh and all that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we got a. Doors open up at six. Doors open at six o'clock. Okay. You can also find me on my. I have to have, shout out another one of my musical nephews, Eric Rogers, and Five and Dime Paisley thing. He's you know he's he's been promoting it pretty okay. much too. Cool. And uh, yeah, so awesome. yeah, a lot lot going on here. <laughs> and at the same time, I'm still trying to work and pay the bills. So. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, this is uh, James and Jellybean. Thank you so much for sharing um, your time generously oh, yeah. with us Absolutely. here. Absolutely. Um, but also just kind of a look at uh, the Minneapolis Sound and what that was and yeah. what it continues to be. Um, yeah. We're excited for the museum. Thank um, you for having us. Yeah, yeah, thanks, thanks for, for caring. You know? Yeah, yeah. We have been here in the Kwame McDonald studio today with James Popeye Greer and Jellybean Johnson talking about the Minneapolis Sound and the Minneapolis Sound Museum. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again soon.